loved ones, today we are going to discuss 25 red flags that could signal domestic abuse lies in the future. Now let's get these messages out. Please subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and hit the notification bell and share these messages with others because you never know, just by doing so, you could save a life. So, a red flag does not necessarily mean your partner is abusive. Relationships are work and compromise. Relationships require compassion and caring for the other partner. If you see multiple red flags in your relationship, it might be worth reconsidering if you want to continue with this person because you could be walking into a living nightmare. So here we go with the red flags. Number one, lack of compromise. When there is an aggressor in a relationship, there is no compromise. The person constantly demands their way, doesn't allow the other person to have a voice or a choice. And many times the aggressor will cause their partner to change plans that they have made and stop seeing friends and family. If the partner insists or confronts the aggressor, violence occurs because the aggressor not only does not understand compromise, but also refuses to do so. Number two, subtle control, such as strongly encouraging you to dress a certain way. Everything in spousal abuse is about power and control. The aggressor wants to control where the partner goes, what they wear, who they visit, etc. The other partner then begins to change their behavior to accommodate all the new rules and prevent a violent outburst. Number three, guilt tripping. The aggressor never takes accountability for their actions and usually blames their partner for everything. They love using guilt-tripping phrases to control their partner, such as, I feel like you don't love me because you prefer to go to your work party instead of staying home and spend time with me. Or, why are you on the phone with them while I am here? This should be our time together. Those are things that I've heard. Course of behavior, number four, or behavior that pressures you into things. This is a huge indicator of violence. Aggressors use coercive behavior to make their partner comply and submit to their power and authority. Gaslighting and other tactics are used to coerce the victim into submission. Number five, having a typically confrontational attitude. Aggressors are insecure and they tend to confront everything. If you begin to not mention things or to avoid things because they would cause a confrontation with your partner, this should tell you that there is trouble ahead. In a normal relationship, two people should be able to discuss anything, reason with each other, and come to a compromise that is in the best interest of their relationship. When I was in an abusive situation, I would certainly avoid discussing certain topics because I knew it would cause a confrontation, and I also knew not to go places or be friends with friends and family because I would later have a confrontation with my abusive partner. Number six, unreasonable statements of how much they deserve or what they deserve. I deserve this, I deserve that. You hear that, then uh, you know there's a problem. Number seven, feeling as if the whole world is against them all the time. I remember my abusive partner ranting and raving all the time over things from work like so-and-so got a raise, got picked for the job, they should have picked me because I have been there longer and I know more, or something like, I don't want to go to your parents' house because they hate me. This is not just a comment, it is ranting and raging. Number eight, denying their behavior. I mentioned this earlier, the abuser will never admit to what they have done. I remember speaking with someone who abused me and they demanded evidence when I um, declared a certain thing and confronted them. I shared events in which others were present, but all they ever said was, I didn't do that, I never said that, or that never happened. To him, I and everyone else in the world were lying. Number nine, a lack in trust in you. This is a big one. An aggressor never trusts you and always accuses you with statements like, who are you talking to? Are you having an affair with him? Or, why are you putting makeup on? Are you meeting someone? It doesn't matter. No matter what you do, no matter how innocent, you are not trusted. In fact, you have to constantly prove your trust to your aggressor. Number 10, a lack of respect for your feelings. Abusers, they have no compassion for others. They make demands regardless of how you feel and 
often insult you when you share your feelings. Number 11, sarcastic comments downplay those jokes. This one is so demeaning, and I despise when people say hateful things, then laugh it off as a joke. It is not a joke. It is a direct attack. One for me was a family member who said, oh, now she's in on our approval list and she married a pastor. Like, I wasn't on the approval list before. Um, when confronted about this conditional approval, the response that day was, ha, 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 I was only joking. And years later when mentioned, it never happened. These jokes, jokes, are meant to break down your self-esteem, so don't ever allow someone to do this to you or others. Number 12, extreme jealousy. This is constant in abusive relationships. If you text, call, visit, or meet a member of the opposite sex, there is always an extreme reaction of jealousy followed by accusations of affairs with others. And there's nothing you can say that can convince the person that it's not an affair. Thirteen, the silent treatment. I hate this one. It's punishing for doing something your abuser doesn't approve of the silent, uh, it's just, let me say that again. To punish you for doing something your abuser doesn't approve of, the silent treatment just as bad, if not worse, than explosive arguments. For me, the silent treatment always signaled a huge explosion later. My abusive partner would come in, look around, and if he saw something he didn't like, sometimes he would just glare at me and then sit and watch TV or go to bed. This silence could go on for days with looks that could kill. In the end, there was always a huge explosion of rage and violence. Number 14, building you up, breaking you down, hit repeat. With this one, the person who abused me would say wonderful things about me and my work to others in my presence, shower me with praise, but later, on the next day in private, would trash me, call me stupid and useless. And then again, they do it again. Number 15 is lying. Aggressors will do whatever it takes to keep their cover. And most abuse happens in private. When confronted by others, they will lie about what happened. And they also lie about several other things like where they were, what they did, etc. Number 16, statements. Like, if you loved me, you would do this. This is a coercive statement made to make you comply to their wishes. It is frequently used to isolate victims from others, too. Number 17 is gaslighting. And this is another trick to make you doubt yourself and lower your self-esteem. Gaslighting is a huge tactic of abusers and their course of control. And we talked about this in prior episodes, if you want to know more. Number 18, abusive actions in prior relationships. This is true, not a cliche. Once abuser, almost always an abuser. If the abuser's prior girlfriend or spouse know this, it is in your future. Number 19, cruelty toward others. The lack of compassion in abusers sometimes rears its ugly head in cruel comments and actions toward others, many times disguised as well. It's just my opinion, or I was only joking. 20, interrogations about your day, your whereabouts. You know, at first, it just seems so romantic when your partner wants to know about your day. In normal relationships, it stops there. In violent relationships, it becomes an interrogation in which you must account for every single minute of your day and justify every single thing you did. 21. This is sabotaging your friendships and isolation. Again, power and control. Abusers want to ruin all of your relationships to gain complete power and control over you and to prove it is you and him against the world. 25. Breaking boundaries. Again, power and control. If you set a boundary, an abuser will break it because he is the one in control, not you. 23. Not taking responsibility for their actions. We discussed a little bit of this, a little bit in the earlier numbers. It's never their fault. It's always your fault or someone else. You made me do this. Aggressors never take responsibility for anything. And they always make themselves out to be the victim. You do this to me and cause me to do this, and I'm having a bad day, and you're making it worse. That's how it goes. Number 24, showing disrespect toward former partners. Listen carefully, ladies. 
If a man disrespects his former partner, it is a sign of how he will treat you in the future. And 25, which goes with some of the earlier numbers, constant checking in, needing to know where you are at all times. This goes with number 20. First, it's romantic when your partner wants to be in contact with you all day. In a normal relationship, it is a few check-ins here and there. In violent relationships, it becomes a sense of stalking and an interrogation in which you must account for every minute of your day and justify everything you did and everywhere you went. If you see one or two of these red flags in relationships, it doesn't necessarily mean you are in an abusive relationship, but if you are experiencing several of them, get out before it's too late. With one in three women experiencing domestic violence worldwide and 15 million children witnessing violence each year, the question is not if you'll encounter a victim of violence. The question before God is what will you do when you do encounter them. You could be the person who saves a life. You're called. We are all called to be champions for justice. And those who suffer violence, they need to know that those who love them and those who don't even know them will step out and reach out to them to give them the help and the courage they need to lead before it's too late. Help us get these messages out. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. And share these messages with others. You never know just by doing so you can save a life. If you're a victim of violence, listen to me. I please, please listen to these things that we're teaching. You are valued. You are loved. You are intelligent. You are beautiful. This is the truth. God does not want you to suffer violence. He wants you to live free from violence and peace and tranquility. There is a way out. It's not your fault. And abuse is not love. If you're a victim of violence, reach out to someone today. If you find yourself in a dangerous situation, Call 911 for help, and if you know a child suffering violence, tell the authorities. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about 14 misconceptions about domestic violence. Until then, 